โอเคตะมะเนี่ยเปลือบบาร์เลยเนาะเอ่อคนละนายดีมาไลฟ์ซาบาเมซาบีดาเนโหดีพี่ตู้ปันไหนตะเชนเลยบ่เนาะต้อง
So to be for the for the uh, uh, revolutionary edifice, and my name is Nao Yu, and I'll be the moderator for the session. So when we talk that when we talk about this uh, goal of the union, we talk about the federalism, and that uh, we will be talking about the federalism as well as the establishment of a mass state. And we also like to welcome our audience and as prejudice to join us and give your opinions and share comments either on this live stream pages or the comment or in the Zoom as well. At the end of the session, we'll have a Q&A and we'll uh, be uh, inviting you as well. And that, uh, and it, it is also that uh, because uh, because of, although we have invited our deputy minister for Ministry of Federal Affairs, he is having connectivity issue in this territory, so he is also quite difficult. But yeah, I want to will be joining us as soon as possible when the internet connectivity is much better. So so thank you for being patient as well, and that. Uh, and also, we also would like to uh, firstly uh, I'd like to invite our speakers to for their self, for their short for a short introduction to our the audience as well. That uh, so, uh, so, yeah, I would like to invite Sister Musi uh, to introduce yourself. Hello, good evening. Uh, I would like, my name is Dr. Pinyamo. I'm an executive director, so ethnic that so ethnic nationality center. And I'm also honored to be part and, and thank you to the organizers for inviting me to join today's talk show. The next as the next speaker I would like to invite is uh, Sia So Winsui. Sia So Winsui. Okay. It's a pleasure to meet all of you. My name is So Winsui. I am from Mamuya General Strike Committee. The Moya, the Moya, the Moya Strike Committee is a committee we established with the, the well known leader with the time, you know, Munai. And the, after that, when the, when the revolution, now that the demonstration uh, changed to the armed resistance. So I'm also not only the, uh, not only in the, the Moya Strike Committee, we are also working with the Yo and the Chin as well. And um, I have always been interested in the politics. And then I've always also uh, worked systematically in the politics as well, and that I've always been active. And this, I'm also very pleased to be part of the discussion on the federalism. Thank you for inviting me. I'm happy to be here as well. That, uh, so I would like to invite the next person. It's called uh, that, uh, Jamat Nudebi. My name is Nudebi, or that I'm also uh, that. Uh, Another uh, uh, revolutionary, um, young generation revolutionary activist. Thank you for the introductions. Uh, that now I would like to first invite uh, Dr. Pinyamo. My question, my question to you is uh, that. Uh, so, so when we talk about that, you know, federalism needs to be a taboo word, a word that you can never speak, you never speak in your mouth back in the days. But now we're talking about federalism. We are talking about the, we have been talking a lot of the revolutionary forces are, you know, broadly are demanding a federal union. So I would like to ask you, start with the, what is federalism? And that, uh, and that, uh, so in the FCDC, uh, FCDCC, well, it was the, it was the, the, the draft constitution, second version, how is the federal union and the federal union's work uh, were, um, were structured? And that also, that are uh, based on the, based on the changes and the, the, the progress made in the political situation, what kind of, uh, you know, what kind of uh, federal structure does it need to be brought? Thank you for your question, so, yeah. So that, uh, what, so let's start with the federalism. How this federalism is a very good question indeed, and that uh, and it is also is also not uh, easy as well. That it also is important to understand when we say federalism, that uh, it is uh, so. It is important to look back the history, in the history, oh, in the back oh, the old days when Myanmar started a revolution against the uh, for the independence against the. Uh, Against the colonialists, uh, we people started talking about federalism. Even the 1947 uh, that agreement, well, agreement or that uh, the decision to move forward with the federalism is the, is is not new. That um, you know, the federalism is something all the, the past successive government have have uh, and it's not new, but has not like it. So federal was considered like a bad word. Federal was considered negatively. So if you talk about federalism, the one who talk about federalism considered as a traitor, 
or as somebody who's betraying the national union as well. But however, when we see that, uh, we see that in the, that uh, with this, uh, you know, people have started to uh, accept the federalism later. And that many organizations have raised awareness. We, our organization also do a lot of public outreach, public education, and that awareness raising, and that uh, that we also talk to uh, that uh, you know uh, that ethnic groups, uh, that. Um, as well as uh, that importance of the federalism, but also the federal principle as well. In short, what is federalism? Federalism is is about uh, it's about a distribution of power. It's about delegation of power. Federalism is a sharing power between the union and government and the federal uh, the, and the governments of the federal units. That uh, this power sharing is the most important. Power sharing is the key, and the, the, through this power sharing agreement, uh, all the, the pillars of power, like governance, executive power, or the legislative, or that, um, or that, um, that uh, the judicial power, all these power will be shared between the federal union, between the union and that uh, and the governments of the uh, federal states. In the, if we look at it from the 2008 constitution, the federal units do not have any power of these uh, three pillars of uh, government. So the 2008 constitution cannot be considered as a federal constitution. The genuine, if we talk about genuine federal constitution, then that the, that the federal federal units have power, and these power they can exercise that those all those three power as well. Only then. Will be able to will have, we have uh, that uh, self that will have self determination. That is one part to this. Uh, my answer for the federalism. That uh, once uh, you no know, federalism is in, and that uh, it is uh, that with the, with the spring revolution, we see more acceptance for the federalism. Before people tend to think that um, you know where we see federalism more is uh, in the ethnic areas, ethnic areas, ethnic community will see that uh, that, uh, that the, the ethnic organizations or ethnic political parties or EROs will see about that. We'll talk about the federalism. They are more interested in federalism. They talk more about it. And that uh, they will say they also, they seem to have a stronger need for it as well. And that uh, it is often federalism initially no playing uh, the red claim by the uh, ethnic side, ethnic community side. A lot of awareness raising. And that, uh, and that, uh, and also that uh, for the people from the mainland, often uh, the uh, it was hard to even to educate and to the public awareness raising for the, for it as well. In my opinion, before before the Spring Revolution, uh, the Spring Revolution, how people have come to and talk broadly about federalism, found that, that uh, you know, Burma majority, however, before the revolution, do not do not study much about uh, federalism. They do not about it. That uh, they know it. They are interested in as a word, but they don't really understand what is a federalism. They don't have a deeper understanding about federalism based on my assessment. That in this, however, in the spring, in this since the spring revolution has started, federalism become federalism is something uh, you know that is bringing together the majority as well as the other community. A lot of people are putting more focus on their federalism. In the and, and even inside the NUCC uh, National Unity Council the Council, there is a joint committee on federalism. In the joint committee, we have representatives from various stakeholders uh, in the Spring Revolution. They are also part of it, and they would uh, that they they would uh, raise uh, like federal concept and that uh, federal principles as well as on the you know, FDC or the Federal Democracy Charter. All this shows that Spring Revolution is. Is in a way more it has developed more for the federalism. It's it's better a situation for the federalism. People of Myanmar are more interested in the federalism as well, because that uh, once the coup has started and people came to realize that we need federalism. Only when we can build a federal union that uh, will have independence, will have a democracy, and we will have uh, all the rights. That all the rights, all the democratic rights, we can only get, we can only get through this uh, federalism. If not, then we will be suffering under the dictatorship. That under the dictatorship, we will, we will in that we we will remain under the dictatorship. So it is important uh, to not know about the federalism. 
that in other words that to my, to, to to my pass uh, to your last question so the how is federal federal union established federal union is based with the union the federal union union and then as well as the federal units it can be called like federal units or it can also be called the states as federal states as well that uh, the name may differ but it's the same idea but the way we want the kind of federalism we want is a federalism uh, is uh, is a federalism based on the based on the federal states so so it is important that uh, it will be the, the federal units will be based on the ethnic states or the states. So that is uh, so. Which units is in the federal federal system? We know there are seven federal units for sure. That uh, these are the seven ethnic states. These will be part of the federalism. What about Burma state? Will there be a Burma state? Is a question that we should ask, and that uh, it's a very good question. Can the Burma majority constitute as so? single Burma unit and that is something also we often discuss as well that uh, the, that uh, when we talk about the federalism when we talk about uh, the establishment of the federal union this is a very uh, common topic and we often talk about it as well and that uh, so how do you establish the federal unit is that in the FCDCC is also stated clearly as well and that uh, and that in the, I think it is the Federal Democracy Charter. I was just looking on it. There is a there is an article, and there also talk about the establishment of the federal units, how the federal units will be constituted, and that, that this federalism is based on the units, and that there will be that uh, there will also be. Uh, so it's also it also is stated in the FD, FCDCC or the national like national states like a Chin national state. There are also national states and the nationality states like uh, that of uh, the entire region. It will because of the nationality state where you have more than one type of nationality. So that is the, the way it is structured according to the FCDCC. Thank you for sharing, Seya. As you have discussed federalism, if we study about federalism we can see that federalism is about uh, autonomy but also is also about the collective uh, the collective uh, the governance or in a way there is also union government but it is also recognizing the different cultures different traditions working together staying together for the for the goal for the for the benefits of all in a collective uh, that uh, kind of a governance system as well thank you for your answers yeah i would like to invite next speaker I would like to invite Sia So Winsui. Sia So Winsui, uh, that uh, may I ask, uh, like, uh, that in this uh, spring revolution, that, uh, you know, we are uh, asking that uh, about it as well, and that uh, in the in the federalism, that, uh, you know, why is Myanmar need to uh, be a federalism? Ravi Nyamu has explained about the definition about the federalism. So, so my question is that uh, what kind of you know, federal union are we you know, are we demanding in this uh, spring revolution? And why does Myanmar need to be in a service as a federal union? I hope you can help hear me. And to, so now we are in this revolution. And when we are take part in this revolution, that there are two reasons for it. One is that whether you are for it or whether you are against it, whether you, mean you like it or you don't like it. So if you want, on the first part, why do we start? Why do we start this revolution? Because of the, you know, we are against it or we don't like it. What we do so what we are against is that we are very much against the military dictatorship. Military dictators have adopted a, 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 a constitution. They, and even the constitution, they then some of the military is violating it and they have conducted an illegitimate coup d'etat. We don't like it. We are against it. On the other hand, we have a publicly elected parliamentarian. These parliamentarians have formed a government. The parliamentarians have the right to form a government and it has been under refused by it. So we don't like it. We don't like that they are abusing this thing. They are, they are in a way, they are not respecting the right of the people. So that uh, in that as well. So it is important so we don't that we that they don't like that they ignore the right to do that. So we, this is what we don't like. But so we are in a revolution because we don't like it. But uh, that it is it is important that uh, that uh, that we 
me too um, because but however even those what we are for and what we are against and then the, there are people also seem to be confused i come from general strike comedy of monua in the monua in the general strike comedy people of monua have demonstrated for months and the months for what we don't like what we are against and we also have made demands we also have asked for what we like uh, let me share uh, some of the you know, demands that we have made i will give you a short summary of that the, our members of the strike committee, including uh, the public leader, the Kowimuna, we have negotiated, we have discussed, and then we have validated with the people of Myanmar. The reason that uh, there are reasons that we are, I can explain to you, we can, we have already you know, identified the reason that why we have uh, for the, uh, that, uh, that, that uh, we, we call it the suit. So as in, uh, you know, that, uh, for the release, the first part is released for the absolute re release of, of all the political members, including Don Sasuji. Another is about the restoration. And what can we say that release, restoration, restoration of power to the civilian government? Here, we have already discussed quite a lot about it. When we say uh, civilian government, we are talking, we are talking about those who have won it as well, and that. Uh, <laughs> that it is also important to ensure that uh, we need to restore and that we want uh, that uh, publicly elected government and that uh, now it's hard to say because it is important to ensure that whatever government came to power it is important to be that uh, you know the civilian government the release of political prisoners is important, as well as uh, that uh, restoration of power to the, the civilian government. The last is about this release uh, and the restore and the draft develop. Develop is a constitution because federal democracy can be very challenging in Myanmar political context. Because the, there have been a long argument about whether it is a democratic federal union or it is federal democratic union. We don't want to argue. So we will say democracy and a federal union. That's what we want to use. Because this means that we need to guarantee democracy and federalism. That is, we need that kind of constitution. So this is our third demand. So these are the ones we are for. So we have asked for three. That. In addition, there are other comments. Look at them carefully as we have been discussing that uh, it is important to be part of this revolution. In doing so, that uh, uh, the ethnicities are either for or against it, they have already been very prepared for it. They have the federal standards, the elements that they want and that uh, they already have drafted the constitutions before. In that part, we can see that the mass are not as prepared. That for example, this is a case we see among the revolutionaries in the Sakai region. Often they will say that they don't like the military, they don't like the dictatorship, but they will say, well, we like, it. we like the federal democracy, but then people don't know clearly, we don't really understand what kind of federalism, what kind of democratic union are we talking about? And that's a challenge. It is important to understand clearly because one the ethnic community asks for, they are very clear, they are very precise, they have already talked about it, they know what they want. However, Ethnic knowledge area is quite limited. That is my answer to the first question. Why do we need federalism? In, um, if you look at the countries around the world, you know, people have higher political awareness as well as more political maturity. So they don't like autocracy. In the political context, people refuse uh, that, uh, that kind of system. People started to exercise federalism. 
Even in that, uh, you know, non-federal countries, we are seeing decentralization. We are seeing more autonomy, even in a not a democratic country. That means we are sharing more power with the, uh, the other levels of the union. To give you a simple example, if you look at China, China is where you have a, you know, mono, a single party controlling. Like they, they allow the Taiwan, they all are Hong Kong, to be have a, like a one country and two systems. And they recognize it and they have to accept it. So this means that even in, a, you know, in the world, we are seeing forms of delegation of power development. But that's the situation that people want. Here we can also see what is Myanmar better suited for federalism, because federalism is about is you know that autonomy is about self rule and share rule. It's like sharing this together. So in a, in a country like Myanmar, where we have a diversity, where it is a better suited as well. That and and the characteristics of the federalism. If we look at them, we will see that uh, we have a written constitution. That uh, constitution that has having a written constitution is one of the features of the federalism. So, in other words, it is important to have a you know developed, written down, amended kind of constitution is necessary, because even then we are facing uh, that have many challenges. So that for the past uh, you know time that we also are having a lot of difficulties. So it is important that as well, and that um, if we were to you know simply uh, that um, that it can be if we were to you know that it started like it, it could be very difficult. So it is important to have a written, developed, written and ended constitution, and that is also important for federalism. And that's why also we need uh, that uh, federalism as well, and that. Uh, and then we also talk about the one of the features of federalism is about power distribution, power distribution, power distribution of in a way power separation of powers as well as power distribution is extremely important. Power is is decided by different uh, different pillars of the government, judiciary, executive, as well as on the legislative have different powers that they can exercise, and we also have the division of power. It is important that uh, that uh, federal units and also can have uh, like uh, in a, that they can also and that uh, that that they, they, they can do that as well. So these are different ways uh, that are in the the ACs in the federalism. So it is important that uh, you know, that do uh, have a do have a federal system that allows uh, that uh, that is our power sharing effective uh, that uh, separation of powers that is important for Myanmar. Another important point is independent judiciary. It is important to have uh, independent uh, data because independent judiciary is can be considered the soul of the federalism. In the federalism, we talk about the separation of powers. We talk about the federal the union. We also talk about the authorities and powers of the federal union as well as in the federal states. That is in the federal constitution. So when it comes to that time, um, sometimes we could have difficulties with that as well, and that that um, that sometimes we could also um, have a difficulty. Uh, there could also often between other different levels of government, there could be there could be arguments as well. There could be uh, disputes as well. It is not a normal dispute between two individual people. When we have a dispute between two governments, it is important to have a free and independent judicial system. It's important to make decisions between different levels of government. Only that then federal will be strong, only then federal will be good. So that, um, you know, that in there, that, uh, in, that in Myanmar, that the situation also is difficult uh, because of the, what has happened in the past, because we didn't have that the, the, the federal tribunal was not independent. That's why also we have the main difficulty as well. And that, uh, so that, that's, why, that, that's why the constitution was not strong because we didn't have independent uh, federal tribunal as well. So independent judicial system is extremely important in the Myanmar case. Another point I would like to say is that to have a bicameral legislature, there should be two levels of uh, parliament. It can also be considered as a federal feature of federalism 
or federalism. We have the upper house or Senate or the House of Nationalities who will work on the politic politics at the national level. And we also have the lower house or the Bidulotov, which is based on the population. So it is more on the democratic has democratic representations of it. By having a bicameral legislature, it will ensure we have a diversity. We can there will, that we're able to avoid friction between different identities as well as different representation as well. These are the tactics or the strategy that can help us avoid those situations. So what is happening in the federalism is to help us to be able to help us resolve the issues as well. So that's why for me, it is important for us to be able to you know, establish federalism because federal that um, that will really help us uh, be able to uh, be able to rebuild Myanmar into a country of peace and prosperity. This is what I will discuss in the first round. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Seya. That, uh, so what in what you in what you have shared, it is very interesting. I have noted taken note of the in very interesting points that uh, that uh, it is important for the you know that be, a lot of uh, force, the democratic forces in this uh, revolution. But however, it is important to have a clear understanding about their politics or the what we are fighting for, and that uh, you made an important point. Another is that why do we need a federalist federal union in Myanmar? And you also look back on the history and the why do Myanmar need to be a federal union, you also have uh, shared us very clearly the reasons why. May I invite another speaker? I would like to invite Siyama Mweudebi. Siyama, let me turn to you. So we are seeing more and more demand for federation building for federal union as well as on the establishment of a Bama, uh, the Bama state. So, and that uh, when the when the federal union is built in Myanmar, there are also demands that, that the central, the mainland should also be uh, established as the established as a that uh, established as a Burma state as well. So how do you see how do you what is your point on that? And how can Burma state, how should Burma state be established? Thank you for your question. If we want to discuss, I think it is important to have a, the, there are two, I would like to start with two points, which will serve as a foundation. Firstly, about the sovereignty, that about the sovereignty and sovereignty as well as on the, you know, transferring, um, the transferring to the sovereign power. I think uh, these foundations may differ between the Burma, major Burma people, Burma, Burma communities and that ethnic community. So we are, we are talking about the building of the federal union. How will we build this federal union is extremely important. These two points are also quite interested as well. And that, um, and when we look at that, uh, you know, that uh, this whole, that, that uh, we all see, we all know that uh, it is uh, the powers of the supreme power that come from the people and that, uh, that, that the people in the different states of different states are the original owners of the original owners of the, of that as well. And that in this uh, spring revolution, we talk about the federalism, we go, we go about the federal agreement, but uh, at the same time, that uh, before the co-founder who want to join, and that um, that um, you know between those entity, they however they're in the uh, do, uh, we are not very clear about the understanding about uh, what are the, the basic foundation of federalism as well. And when we say federalism, and that um, you know we talk about the establishment of the federalism, we have a common agreement of the federal union. But when we say federalism, that what we have uh, we don't have really have a common agreement on what kind of federalism or what format of federalism because Myanmar has never been a union although in it's called as a union we all know that we have Myanmar has never been a, a, a democratic union it was very much a centralized control more of a unitary state it's not a really union so the most people see majority see the federalism especially especially among the party by, by, by among the, the mainstream politicians how do they see federalism is that uh, you know where the central government has the power and the central government could devolve some of the power to the federal state. And that's how they see federalism. So when we say equality and when we say equal rights or the federalism, they are saying like uh, sharing, uh, taking part of the, some of the power from the central you know, central government to the union. That means they're losing uh, some of their mandates and authorities of the Burma majority. That's how they have been sharing. That's how they are seeing it. And that in actually in, by nature and the way they well, why, well, it is not the right. It is it is quite opposite to what the ethnic communities want as well. And that if we do this like that, and that uh, and that uh, that opinion uh, that that we are seeing is uh, that how 
you know, is is all based on the how the how it's it's based on the um it is very much based on the um previous constitution, including the the military uh, military two thousand eight constitution as well. And these are the and these are the perspectives that come from the old system, the old politics as well. But another problem, another issue is that rather than have a, having a, such a centralized perspective of that where the central government control everything, there is also another perspective, another perspective that it is simple, that uh, there is more opening, more understanding about the mutual sharing of the power within the central unit and as well as on the federal units that it is, but although there is a much more open that kind of system, but it is not what the ethnic community wants. So what is um, that ethnic communities one as a federal federal union is that the federal units confer the power to the central so the central that we can form a federal union together the power the power comes from the fed, from the federal states the power doesn't come from the central central union and that it is that it is not the federal units which confer power to the central to act as well so that is a different perspective so we all have a common agreement of establishing the federal union but for kind of federalism is quite different between the Burma and that non Burma as well. That uh, often there is, or uh, we are seeing a clear distinction, a clear difference in terms of perspective as well. If you were to, you know, that we we'll would try together and add together, and that. Uh, that we that it is important to also to uh, do uh, to kind of agreement as well. In the uh, that to your second question is that uh, the second question is that uh, you know that uh, in the right in the current time and the, in the future how will how will the federal union be established? As we all know, 1947 agreement was used as a as a way to establish a federal union, but it has never been the same as well. Another, it has never been a genuine federalism as well. And that uh, they also say that the Burma Central, that the the, the mainlands, mainlands or the lowlands of Burma area could be considered as a Burma state, and the others are as an ethnic state. And it's a propaganda brainwash kind of perspective that has been, uh, you know, that's used by the, by the military. And that kind of propaganda exists in among the military, the fascist army. And it also is in the, among the, some of the mainstream politicians as well. Some of the political, poli some of the, poli the political, you know, activists, uh, they may be against the military, but they are similar in their thinking when it comes to federalism and they have the same idea, they have the same principle and they do not still not uh, as Except uh, that the kind of a genuine organic kind of federalism is also one of the major obstacles as well. In reality, uh, that uh, what is happening is that uh, you know that we have seen that uh, that um, you know it is important to destroy the old structure, the, the brainwash or the propaganda, propagandized kind of uh, you know, ideology about federalism. We need to have a new that we cannot you know continue to build a federalism based on the old distorted distorted image of a federal structure because we if we want to build a new union this now is the time we have the opportunity to rebuild stronger foundations better structures and better foundations we need to you know go, go beyond that and we need to think about that it is now time for us to be able to do a new kind of a federal structure the new federal union that want to be a new structure address structure that want to be is to ensure that it is um it is a format where that uh, sovereign uh, federal units come together in a union is a coming together they are coming together it's a coming together structure to form a former union and they confer power to the central union and th in this kind of for, for this kind of uh, you know that uh, you know for, for federalism and that uh, and that uh, the, to the topic about the, your question about the Burma state, and that uh, if we do that, then in the new union based on that, what is the rule? We need to think about the rule of the Burma, whether Burma be part of the structure or not, if they not, how do you want to do? They want to go with the old foundation over spectacle new, that how will the Burma structure be established? And there are also, Questions we need to answer, and we must we must answer these questions as well. And these questions these questions are coming sooner or that sooner rather than later, given the current situation and that uh, for that you know ethnic um, the ethnicity based states as well as uh, the the geographical states that there has been a lot of efforts for the I for the for self determination and equality like the Rabinia Mwasi. That we have a lot of federalism. We have from the Shan state. We have the Shan state. We have the twelve state twelve uh, state federal federalism for federal and that there, there has been many 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 forms of federalism that has been raised that has been prepared by the ethnic communities we talk about the state of uh, 
know, no, the, the national states, national, and that uh, no, the nationality state as in many. Even in the second draft of the FCDCC, we they, we talk about the Vermont state establishment of the new ethnic states were there as well. Even before 2021, the coup, even during the civilian government, uh, here in the in my in the my giant, uh, we had uh, in the summit of the EROs also was uh, that one of the statement which was a establishment of the Vermont state and that at this uh, community have asked for it as well and that uh, in this uh, you know, spring revolution as well we are also in area where we are the EA, new a new AO KNDF is mean which has been fighting strongly and uh, with this uh, in the working is allied to the NUG as well that if you look at the manifesto of KNDF is also going to talk about establishing of the Vermont state as well so the establishment of Vermont state is not a new request it has been coming on the several areas and that um, that um, that I would that it is also important to change it as well that um, that it is um, that so these are the policy uh, that is, has, has it happening as well that uh, uh, that's, that it is it is important to accept that and that uh, that um, and that um, that, um, that um, and that uh, it is important uh, that uh, it is important to recognize it it's important to to see that you know that um, you know we cannot stay behind with we're gonna stay by with a system that has never had in this society that uh, power is related relevant to privilege and privilege is relevant to the identity and diseases these are the concepts we cannot ignore so when it comes to federalism it is important to that uh, it is important to have a negotiate it's important to build understanding it is very important because you know especially among the Burma forces it is important to talk together to guess as well in, uh, in short uh, that not just the Burma unit i think uh, there will also be uh, that um, you know that if there, there could be uh, more people more states who want to join us as well i think it is important to you know it could be 20 states it could be 30 states and we should not be afraid of that you know we should be going for it and that uh in that uh, when you say that uh it, when you have to think about is that uh you know that how do we guarantee that equality and that equality and that uh, autonomy that is the most important thank you in the point that you have made uh, that we had talked about the weaknesses we also have talked about the challenges as well and that in the future as well that uh, it is important to be able to go beyond as well and that uh, it is also important for us to be able to uh to be able to reach the goal through the negotiation and discussion thank you very much for sharing and that uh so we have that uh, we also like to uh, remind you that if you are interested in the talk show, if you want to join in the discussion, either please raise your hand or you can also participate in the Q&A section, which is reserved at the end of the talk show. That um, and that uh, then okay. That I would also like to uh, ask again a question to Sia Punyamu, Sia Punyamu. That uh, and that. Uh, we also have in the FCDCC that uh, structure. They also have talk about uh, having ethnic states and new federal state as well as a Burma state as well. That uh, that if we look at uh, you know the, the events of the ethnic communities, what are the situation there? And that in the future as well, that how do we see it? That what kind of uh, how, what do you think? What kind of um, you know state should there be in in terms of uh, you know that uh, and and that uh, about it. Uh, that uh, we also like what kind of what do you see uh, can you can you also see what kind of uh, you know principles are there for the submission of the uh, the union as well and that how do we see also the if the federal unions um so the states are coming together thank you for that question so you were talking about the uh that fdcc we we're talking about uh that um i think uh, in the article in the fdcc let me check in the article 50 about establishing of new federal units that uh, and it is also included in that as well in that uh, that one of the as one of the um, participants uh, one of the um that the speakers have shared before so i would like to say that why do we talking about the you know that um you know uh that uh, why are we talking about the um, you know Burma state and that uh, you know EAOs and that other political other uh, you know are the that others also talk about often about it, why they are pushing hard on the establishment of the Burma Union is that um, you know in you know, if you look at uh, in, in Myanmar contest you'll see that um, that um, you know that um, in a way 
the um, mama is a majority uh, majority in a uh, majority population in in uh, in uh, in Myanmar and that and also that uh, Burma majority is important important and that uh, it will be is also important for for the not for involved in the political conflict as well as on the for the economic development as well as on the peace building it is important to have their participation and support of the Burma community because it's a one of the major is a majority so that non Burma ethnic communities are uh, really wish that um, you know that Burma be part of the system be part of the federal union they want Burma community to be serious about the establishment of the um, you know union because only then it will be so if they are not participating then the, you know that uh, how they will see their you know, the community is that uh, they will see that uh, that uh, it will be as the Burma is known as a state. Then Burma will be there. You know, like in the past. In the past, it was like they were the central government. You know, they they have the central combo other uh, over others. So that if Burma only when there is a Burma state, then uh, there will be equality because if they don't form a Burma, you know, Burma uh, unit, and then that means that they remain as a they remain to hold a centralized power. So that if it is like that, then we cannot form a federal union. But if we, when if we form a federal union, then it won't be a coming together federalism. That it will be more of a holding together where you have the, you know, where the ethnic one ethnic community holding all the power. That the central government, uh, Burma government, control all the powers, and it's like a and the communities are asking for power from the Burma. It is more of a coming together format. It's not a coming together format. It only when the Burma is considered as a unit. That then, uh, then uh, they are if they are part of it, and that only then will be able will 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 have uh, that uh, that one in the establishment of the uh, the federal union. There will be more of a uh, coming together. It's possible, and that's why also that non burma and the community always push hard for the establishment of the Burma Union. They need there must be a Burma Union. They will say that they will say how oh, that we must form a Burma Union. But how do we form that? So that um to the so also there are there are not many people. The many people say that yes, there should be a Burma state. But how do we form a Burma state? I don't think we have many organizations. We are giving you know, advice for that. Even among the Burma people, also there are also a lot of uh, challenges as well. And that uh, you know, which political party, with or political organization, or institution will take the lead to establish the Burma portal. Which Burma should be, you know, which Burma community should be, you know, should be taken in there, should take the lead to do that. Burma community also had these challenges as well. And that let's say, so for example, like UWSA, that war state, that UWSA, and they they talk about the war that the, the UWSA, UWSA will take about the forming the war state. They are doing this, and that that's what they do, and that it, that's very clear for them. So they do it for the war state, about the war state. So the political party can take the lead. Uh, they are forming it on a from based on that. So that is uh, that the format they have. So for them is that uh, for the establishment of a war state is very clear. That uh, and that uh, they they have they feel more confident about it. For the Burma people, it's not like that. That uh, you know who is uh, you know who is doing it or who has done that is not sure that uh, it is also the, in the SPDCC as well that, uh, you know, we talk about that uh, when we talk about the Burma as well. And that, um, you know, it is uh, important uh, that uh, to, to be able to do it important to form uh, that, uh, that it is in the FDCC said that Burma and the other administrators do indicate their willingness, their desire to stay as a, you know, as a federal unit. That is a very important point that, uh, you know, that, uh, that uh, do they have this desire? That's the first question we need to ask uh, that, uh, you know, when we say Burma, when we say Burma and that who, who are we talking about as well? And that, uh, you know, are we talking about Burma? Which Burma are we talking about? Are we talking about Burma in Bago? Are we talking about Burma in the region? Are we talking about Magui? Are we talking, who are we talking about? It is important to, you know, understand that as well. And that, uh, and that it is important to have a, you know, which which Burma we are community are, is is when is have a, you know want to want to form the federal union. I think that's something. It is also is uh, you know difficult us as well. That uh, that's why we ask it uh, that that it, we are asking the federal journal as well. In the in the spring revolution, we talk about the establishment of uh, you know 
the, the Bama state. Right now, we have a lot of opportunity. What do we need to, what do we need to form a federal union? We need to have the willingness, we need to have the desire to form so as well that, uh, that the most important, the, the best idea is from that it will be uh, that is uh, Sakai Mugui, and that these are the you know the heartland of Burma, so to speak, and that uh, by history as on well, the historic uh, by historical values or the by the nature it is important as well, and that uh, that it is also important uh, that uh, that uh, ethnic groups as well, and that we talk about that you know. That it is, it is also important to uh, about the about also about the building of the uh, that you, that building of the power as well, and that uh, it is also important to be able to build that nature. So, but must take could start from there. In in doing so, we can see that we can see that very clearly that okay, the people it will be you know that uh, the, these are the we we can say that well these are the areas living in my community are uh, what, what they have desire to form a Burma state. Then we'll have the we then we have the the support and the agreement of other ethnic groups and that other you know from the other uh, from the other ethnic groups and then this will be the start. It will be the very good start indeed. That uh, you know we have like de facto the people and the de facto that these people community they can form as well they can also start a law crbh is the legislature so that if we're based on the demand of the people then CRBH can start working on it if not de facto that that the, the people in that area can all the ethnic or the armed organization of political parties or the activists or the all these can work together in the region in the region like i'm going to say okay we we are forming a Burma state they can also start it that's what that's a the jury or this is junior revolution so it could de facto is the best i think rather than the jury is the best this is also you can also start forming as well that's what i like to give the suggestion as well what about the other 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 states other states they have a political leader they have the political party they can take the lead they are already forming it by their leaders as well that they started from the de facto then they will come into the jury as well the jury will come when you can have ended the laws and then when you can also have for the federal uh, federal unit as well and that uh, and that you know with the law we we'll be able to enact the laws and then we will have a de jury structure as well so we can start doing a revolution with the de facto and then go into the jury. Thank you, Fia, for the explanation. In your explanation, you talk about that uh, that it is important that uh, federal units, that uh, it is, well, it, it will be that the power that will be uh, set by the, the federal units and that in the, so it is important to have the desire to establish a Burma state as well as on the, that in that there are also possible what will be what will be the way we can we can achieve we can we can make efforts in the current situation. Thank you for sharing that. Now I would like to ask question to Siama Nui Udabi. Siama, when we look at the federal federal unions around the world some of the you know federal states are based on ethnicity some of the federal units are based on the geographical demarcation as well that uh, and that uh, they form the national states um, or the federal units based on the concentration of the um, ethnic nationalities and the culture and sometimes they also you know establish a state space on the geographical location and the population concentration as well and that uh, and when people are asking for that you know Burma to form a Burma state then with the higher concentration of population and that uh, and the broader territory that what kind of federal units will be best suited in Myanmar as a federal union? May I hear your assessment? Thank you. So that Sia had talked about Mendeley, Magui, and Sakai as a you know Burma mainland area, and I have listened to Dr. Ponyamo said. So I think what is important it is important to to uh, when we establish a federal union as a coming together, what will be the role of the Burma and which role the Burma play is important. It is important to consider, and that how will we also form the federal units? When it comes to these questions, I think it is important that Burma Burma political and uh, politicians and Burma political mainstream must will also need to discuss about that. They also need to also do really the points together. Right now, to be able to do that, we still have a lot to try. To be able to bring together, we have to first try to be able to people to be boost our discussion. It will need to, you know, get people together first. Because, okay, let's say 
there has been efforts there have been efforts about the you know geographical base uh, you know the states as well as on the nationality states but we talk also about forming new federal new federal units we are saying this because that um, if it is for the you know purpose of uh, coming together then it is important to have uh, you know that uh, sovereign federal units uh, which will have equality and autonomy and it is the objective that's the objective in the, them asking such demand so so it when we look at the mainland mainland which is um, you know brought in territory and then the population i would say you still need to do a lot of negotiation a lot of dialogue a lot of discussions a lot of coordination but it is important that uh, all the people in the federal union will need to will, will need to be able to have uh, have uh, that uh, autonomy and that uh, legislature as well as on the self self determination and those are the basic principles of equality having access to justice and uh, if we if we negotiate based on these common principles then it will be um it will it will also be uh, successful that there is a right to form um, new federal units or how the new federal units can be formed. Form, how what will be the names of the, well, the these federal units and how many federal units will be there all these questions uh, all these questions can be discussed they are not the main issue if really people in uh, in people inspire a new federal union i think the name of the ad state or the federal unit or the number of units are important but they are not the key and this we should not be you know delaying time and that as well and that um, you know that um, and then if we uh that, that uh, in a way i uh, say so there are also some people who are say very much against say well we are pushing us to establish a Bamaj unit is you know making thing impossible thing and there are also those who are holding on to the old format old structure i consider them as a, just a waste of time of the political process as we have discussed before at that time you know it is important to have a separation of powers it is also important um, if we want to really establish a federalism then it is important um, it is important that uh, um, that uh, that uh, you know that democratic the democratic friends will need to be uh, that need it is it seems to be they seem to be stuck and also, I'm sure people also have heard about it as well. I think it is important to understand very clearly. It is so important to uh, to be have to have a better understanding as well. And that uh, you know that there are those who are against the against the you know Burma state formation of Burma state and they were you know delaying that they are using the you know names of the federal units and there's the size of the unit unit or who should, which territory should be needed and they are using it as a delaying tactic it's something it's nothing to be afraid about that uh, and that in it uh, in it it is important that we uh, talk about we talk about the need to form a Burma unit and their Burma, Burma state and that uh, if you do that uh, then uh, and then uh, if there are also people those who ask and they say that if we form that then now uh, you know will the problems be um, problem be resolved no it will not it will not automatically resolve all the problem but it's a way to solve the problem in the question is uh, like you're saying that uh, it is important uh, that uh, you know in an area like uh, where we have a land, land, lot of uh, area territorial coverage with the concentration of population you know it, where you also have more than one majority when you have a lot of a lot of the nationalities for example like the Kai region that you have just mentioned they have many ethnic communities living there in such communities it is also important to ensure there is fairness and that uh, you know that uh, it is important important to ensure their system to protect them as well and that uh, and that uh, that it is also important to ensure that we have protection as well and that it is important to have good system to ensure the protection for the for the all the ethnic minorities as well and that uh, although there, were, there are those people saying that uh, in our society there are many people say that oh there is no discrimination but in reality discrimination still exists it is important to have anti-discrimination law doesn't matter how many federal units are there the number is not important i don't think we have to be concerned worry about the number of units they got the units could be based on the religion it could be based on the gender it could be on the orientation it could be on ethnicity it could be on language it could be on culture or that it could be about the new dis dis ability or disability there are many many such differences it is important to you know ensure that they are their rights are equally protected that we have a good system to ensure that that is the most important as well and that uh, so that um, and that um, it went where people will say that uh, uh, that uh, 
And that, um, that, that, you know, so that, oh, if we do that, you know, will we have that, will we be, you know, discriminated? Will we be, we be always often worry about that as well? You know, it's not like that because what happened is that uh, those who are in the federal units, that people coming from different communities, I think it is important to think about that, that, that there should be laws, there should be anti discriminatory We need to have a system to ensure equal rights and equal protection for all the minority, all the people living minority or majority in the area as well. And that, uh, okay, one of the speakers also explained why the demand for establishment of the federal union, there are reasons for that. So right now, until now, that uh, you know, the Burma, Myanmar also um, have also uh, suffered. They are also being you know, victims of the oppression. They are also being suppressed as well. So the murder must say that. Well, we are that, um, and then now uh, that Burma also are very much against it. Don't call us the Burma majority because we are also being uh, oppressed by the military as well. And that this is also a case when you consider for the equality sake, it is important. And by for the Burma, if you say that we are not the same, we cannot cannot paint us as uh, you know, we're going to put us in the same basket like the military, then this is an opportunity to recognize that the Burma state as one unit among others. It is also a way to able to address the suspicion and the mistrust that have existed for, for, for the decades as well. And it can also have built uh, that is as well. Uh, that, uh, and that, uh, that um, and that uh, in this uh, that uh, so it is important to be able to be a bit as well that uh, because um, that um, it is will be important. So it is uh, it is important. It, it is also uh, it is the main for that uh, for the for the for the political resolution as well. And that in doing so, I think it is also important also to think about it. You think about the ethnic about the about the ethnic rights as well as on the geography and the population to identify the ethnic rights. So what we hear most about those the naysayers on the Burma state is that by forming the Burma state, that will the Burma will the Burma lose that will they become oppressed when they became a minority when they began treated you know differently we, and we are also hearing that and reading such concerns as well no it is not it won't be like that because you know becoming a you know unit doesn't mean that 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 uh, you know it's not about it's not about losing your superior position and this is not something that will be that you will lose by it as well and that uh, it in terms of that uh, when we look at as when you look at the federal unit as well and that uh, th that it is important uh, for for us to be able to form uh, that union as well and that uh, and that um, and that for the by for me uh, that is Ma Myanmar as well I think it is important uh, uh, to, to to do that as well and that um, that it is uh, when we say that um, you know in that it is important to uh, that uh, you know we we'll able to see that as well and that um, and that it is we don't have to worry about you know losing the the, the privilege or the majority or that as well and that uh, uh, that we often often say that you know because that uh, because there's some people if we say that don't you have to worry about being a minority lose majority losing privileges and they said oh no don't talk about the discriminatory ethnicity issue but if we look at the conflicts of Myanmar if we look at the all the conflicts of Myanmar ethnic conflict is part of the major issue it's part of the major conflict as well so it is uh, if it is is a part of the problem then it needs to be part of the solution too and that uh, it is important to speak up it is important to you know resolve the issue as well because power is that power power is related to, like i said before power is linked to privilege and privilege is linked to the identity and that's the reality we cannot ignore so we cannot blame ignorance we cannot uh we need to that when we set this policy the policy the principles are intended not only for the revolution but also for the beyond the revolution this is also important don't think about the intersectionality of different identities and take that in consideration for the policy identity can be you know can can be can be a wide variety of spectrum as well that if we have a, in a country like Myanmar where we have a lot of issues with the inequality then we need to address the issues of identity as well or the ethnicity if we the day where we don't have discrimination by the ethnicity then we don't have to talk about this ethnic identity so now we have to talk about ethnic identity because we still have a discrimination if there is an equal system we can do that then we don't have to worry about it again as well 
that uh, that what is what is missing, what is needed is that we need a federal system that reflects the that reflects the all of us, that reflects uh, that that the constitution that reflects equality and self determination, and that in informing the federal units or the federal union, it is important to have a constitution that reflects the aspirations of all the community, all the people. It needs to be inclusive. It needs to be reflect and represent as well, and that is what is missing, and that is also going on as one of the other speakers has said about for to assure to assure a, that uh, independent judicial system is needed yes it is extremely it is very needed and some people say oh it's still too far away we are in a revolution no we need to talk about them now we need to discuss them we need to uh, able to build understanding like Ada has said before how do we form the federal units is a question in that um you know by sociology but if you look at it from the social perspective or the we look at it from the culture or that, um, you know, that um, it is important uh, that, uh, you know, that for us to able to talk to each other, it is extremely important that, um, you know, that what kind of is there, it is important uh, that uh, it is important uh, to uh, to, uh, to ensure that uh, it is well, and that uh, in doing so, like Siapo Nyamo has said, uh, said before, and that, um, that uh, it is uh, or the Mugwe Sakai or Mendeley on uh, that. Uh, so there has been a discussion about Mugwe Sakai and Mendeley and that, uh, and also in Sakai that, uh, that, uh, that we also have seen that, uh, uh, that uh, also the need for it as well, though that, uh, and that, um, you know, it is also a situation we need also need to discuss and that, uh, and that uh, once we form is uh, the federal federal unit, and then uh, it is important also to think about that there, there should be guarantees and that uh, mechanisms so that uh, you know, and that uh, if we can really ensure that that uh, reflects uh, that reflects the reflects the reality, the reflects the, all the desires of the people and equality is important. Thank you, Sema, for sharing. I think I noted two key points from you. One is that. Uh, that uh, when we form the Burma, you know, Burma, Burma mainland as a federal unit, there are concerns that our our rights will be waived, our rights will be undermined, or we will become will be um, bullied or will be discriminating others. It's not. I understand that is that they have concern. It's not that they don't want to form a Burma state. People need to have a clear understanding about what does uh, being a Burma state entails. And I understand that there are concerns and they also have worries as well. That is what I have. Uh, what I understand is another part is about. Of the you know the trust building trust building is important and that uh, among the ethnic communities it is also important to ensure that uh, as well and that um, that uh, you know it is also important also to the raise awareness as well and that uh, when people have a better understanding and people have uh, and that um, you know that uh, also that uh, more understanding and more knowledge that uh, they can also really have help as well and that um, another and that another point we are seeing is that uh, you know wanting to build a federal union is that uh, is important for that uh, for for building a that to build a, to build a federal union that is appropriate to our structure our composition and that is also an important point as well. I think uh, thank you for I think it is also um, can take uh, that uh, you, your suggestion is that it is important that the federal system reflect the situation the context and political aspirations of the people. Thank you. I would like to go to um, the Kosomisi that uh, so. We have listened to other speakers. Other speakers have shared about it as well. So my question to you is that the federal union, that's the ethnic nationality desire, the federal uni union that the Spring Revolution is demanding. In short, a federal union, which is our common objective, which will ensure equality and self-determination for all the, you know, all the people of the federal, of the people of the union, what are they? How would you? How can we address and how can we build? What kind of challenges will there be? And that uh, what will be your recommendation to all the ethnic uh, ethnic revolutionary forces, including the NUG? Then uh, how do they will need it to work together? So this is my point uh, to you as well. So I will question you to please give your uh, suggestion as to how to overcome these challenges. Thank you, 
Usang ideology bo. Ada usang ideology ka detail bo bi jebian bo lu me bi. Diha guru jono tau bi aje mas. Dah jono tamai cawu ni ni bi anji me tu dosin ya. Jono leda ko ma cikan ubi suai le. Dah cikan ubi di. Oh, bilang tu pengsan. Bilang tu san do tapi bilang cikan ubi pide lu le. Kau cek cakap lu le ya. Tu do jono lu ada jadi ka. Pari si leh tu, di tema jono lu di right to succession. Jono lu di kuat 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 ni betul. Cikan ubi le. Now let me talk about the right to succession. And there was uh, a right to a succession in 1947 constitution. It was quite a, a risky standpoint that uh, people took at that time because it is, it is quite rare to have a constitution covering the um, succession clause. I mean, globally speaking, but it was the case in 1947 constitution. And after 10 years of this 1947 constitution, uh, by the time it was uh, in 1958, the secession discussion happened. And as you all know that the UNU government then um, uh, over the um, country's power to the um, to the Unewin government at that time. The when it come to the history perspective, the military coup happened due to the reason of unfinished the federal solution, the unfinished federal situation lead the military coup, I would say. So the leading ideology regarding federalism, it's um, what it's this country in need of. We must not look at the uprooting the military dictatorship alone in this revolution. This revolution must have the goal to establish the genuine federalism in the country. Solving the military dictatorship will not have federalism in the country popping up as, I mean, automatically no it won't be the case so having said that there are organizations there are groups there are there are um ethnic group that interpreted the situation happened only because of the military dictatorship. But on the other hand, there is another school of thought that this revolution is to establish the federalism in the country. So we have this, these two school of thoughts in the country. And we also have the signatory ethnic, I mean, uh, the ethnic arm organization um, that is the signatory of the National Ceasefire Agreement, and there are the non-signatory of the um, the um, National Ceasefire Agreement as well. So, nevertheless, we really need to have the political agreement. This political agreement would be the foundations of the future democracy um, of democratic federal um, foundation. And we also have NCA um, um, signatory organization, and they have to think of their political vision as well. And the assumptions and the idea of the non 
NCA had to be um, observed as well because we have to consider all the scenario in the future. Do we want to have the union that would not have Shan in it? Or do we want to have a union that would not have one unit out of this? So all of this has to be thought through. And there are many organization and there are many ethnic organization. There are many political organization that are not part of the revolution as well. But then again, how are we going to deal with them? If we are not talking about the comprehensive journey, then it would not be ideology sufficient to build the future country. So for the NUG, NUCC, they have to consider the organizations within the revolution and they also have to think of the organizations that are not part of the revolutions as well. They have to have a very open heart. They have to open up the whole thing in order to consider the future. This is my first contribution that I would like to make. Thank you very much. And now I would like to um, give the floor to another um, panelist. Zagain region is the strongest in terms of its revolution dynamic in this current um, dynamic. And now I would like to ask you why we need to have Burmese unit for the future. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. I would like to ask you to the previous panelist. And thank you very much for asking me this um, follow-up question. In Zagain, there are attempts to establish the Zagain Federal um, Consultation um, Commission or uh, Committee. And that is what I would like to say one thing. And after, straight after the uh, military coup, it was in April, May of last year, there are already federal um, council in 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 other units of the country such as chin federal consultative council so in zagain there was such talk but for very various reason the establishments of his zagain federal consultative council it's yet to be um organized in Zagain, as you all know that there are such diversities of the um, defend forces. And but then again, we just have to wait time in order to accomplish one thing or something. And as of now, we try to establish a collective body with whatever name that you want to say, what whatever name that you want to give in Zagain. Whenever you ask somebody why you revolt in this situation, and the majority of them would say, I don't like the military dictatorship. So this is the majority opinion in the Gain region. People would not like that if I say so. So now my question is that what do you want out of the future? So what do you want in terms of the structure of the Gain? There is no collective body that could represent the 
Gain at this moment. And there is this nickname that the Gain, the military cemetery, about. As you all, you all know that in NUG, there is no Zagain representing um, ministry and in NUCC, there is no um, rep uh, representative of Zagain regions as well. But then again, yes, there is a member f f in, of 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 Zagain in um, General Strike Committee. But then again, it is a very limited representing representation that the Zagain has in the national level. Another thing that I would like to talk about is that there is no clear platform, or there is no uh, an, uh, a sufficient platform for Zagai to express their voice in the revolutionary stage. So we realize that there is a need to have our collective representing body of Zagai. Whenever we are trying to establishing one thing, people have very negative concern whenever we establish we were to establish something and people would label us that oh are you going rival no we want to have the collective representing body of the guy we want to represent in national unity government then we want to have the acknowledgement of our representation by the national unity government. There is no need to worry about our, our sentiment in terms of being rival. No, not necessarily like this. But then again, when it comes to the um, formality in terms of legitimacy for our representation, there are many mechanisms to address this. It's just a matter of technical perspective. But overall, principally speaking, we want to have the right to self-determination. We want to represent in the national level. So we also have this highest um, highest uh, principle of all which is the um, national i'm sorry which is this um, democratic federal um, charter so in this um, in this um, democratic federal charter we have all the right to set up the collective representing um, body of Zagai. And another thing I would like to talk about is that in the future, whenever we make this country again in the future, we need to have the collective representing body. But then again, some people worry that if there would be such kind of um, of, of representing, collective representing body of the guy in the future, if its structure is not proper, then how are we going to abolish it? It would be difficult to abolish it in the future. So some people worry that. I don't think that it is not to be worried in this way. So now let me talk about in this revolution time and in this, in the um, post-revolutionary period, uh, period and 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 in the uh, in in the far away future we really need to have the collective representing body of the guy but then again the second question is that who will be the member of this body and in, in terms of who we want to be comprehended so this is a reason that we are engaging the um the 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 the, the, the defense forces and we also engage with the um, legitimately elected member of the Zagain region so all i am trying to say is that we are looking only 
at the current need. Any federal unit, Burma unit, do we need to um, have it or not? While having this kind of document, we have our houses burned down while we are speaking. I mean, our people got murdered while we are speaking now, and our home were burned down into ashes while we are speaking now. While we are doing all of this, this is the reality that we are sacrificing. So we are piling the dead bodies over the dead bodies while we are arguing whether should we need to have the Zagain unit, whether should we need to have Anya unit, whether should we need to have the Bama unit. But nevertheless, we definitely need to have the regional representing a collective body it's in need of in order to handle the situation. This is my belief. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for your contribution. I do believe that um, people would really understand your message and get your message. And now I realize that there are many questions um, being asked by the participant as well and um, you may also have a chance to ask the question um, towards the end of our program but before i mean um, having the q a i would like to ask the final question to one of the panelists dr bo nyamon we want to have the new future, we want to have the new country, but then again, our people, what kind of value that the people need to understand, what kind of principle that people would need to appreciate? Thank you. Thank you very much for your question and thank you very much for having me to contribute for second round in here i mentioned it already this spring revolution it's the good opportunities this is the opportunity that make the a uh, bounding or the proximity between the Bama and non Bama closed. So in this revolution, as you can all see that we have uh, Bama involvement and we have non Bama involvement and Bama people really understand that there is a need to have federalism in the country and the Underst they start understanding the need to have federalism in this country. If not, they start considering that the federalism might be the solution. And another thing is the federalism journey will never be ended if the Bama majority will not participate. We cannot establish our federal future without Bama. Because federalism principle itself is comprehensive. We have to have everyone establishing the federalism. Now, the question is that what is the goal of the revolution, the spring revolution? The goal of the spring revolution is not just to get rid of military dictatorship. We just want to have the establishment of federalism. This is the goal of the um, Spring Revolution, and even if you manage to get rid of get rid of the military dictatorship, the federalism will not appear automatically. No, it is not. So, this is the opportunity that everyone is having. It is very important you don't lose it. So, Bama people, non Bama people, have to have the collective struggle for federalism for the future. Dialogue is to be there, understanding needs to be established, and 
common vision has to be established and misunderstanding has to be um, clarified. And in this revolution, we are facing difficulties, yes. We are facing all sorts of challenges, yes. And we have all sorts of diversity in terms of political ideology and opinion, yes. But all of these can be addressed through dialogues. We have to have continuous dialogues. Today is a dialogue. It is very productive for me because establishment of Bama unit is something that was treated as taboo in the past. Federalism was taboo terminology in the past. So the Bama unit was the taboo word in the past. No one dared to speak it out. If you don't speak it out, no one would understand. If no one would understand, no one would support it. So now talking about federalism in order to establish in the future we need to have bama unit which is a very clear principle and this is a principle that everyone should agree and would agree but when it's the only question so we need i mean the f first and foremost there is a need to have the a commitment or willingness of the Burmese people to have the Burmese unit. If the Burmese people do not have the willingness to have the Burma unit, then there will not be such unit. And every politician would ask for the vote to establish the Burma unit. If Burma people would not have such willingness, this politician will not get the supporting vote. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that it is very important for the Bama people to have the willingness to have a Bama unit. The Bama people or the people in general would need to be aware of this concept. Now, I still haven't talked about the territories of the Bama unit. So, I think no one is happy with our situation. If in terms of our territories but then again things some of the things can be discussed and can be treated with all sort of dialogues in futures as well as long as we keep on talking we will find the solution at this moment we must we we sh I mean, we are okay if you still don't talk about the territory of the Bama unit, but if Bama people start talking about the willingness, political willingness to have the Bama unit, it is already something to begin with. So the Bama people, if I may repeat it, need to have the trust the what is the trust that i'm talking about the trust it's to be built between or among bama and non bama people i think this is the first step and this revolution pushes us to be closed between and among ourselves in the past we cannot distinguish between bama people and the central government it is not the case anymore now now we have the Bama people dissociate from the central government the Bama government so next step it's to show the willingness by Bama people to have the Bama unit the Bama unit emergent itself it's the token of trust and foundation of future union as well and if this was be such case the success of the revolution would get closer and closer so whenever we are talking about the political commonality 
political understanding, political belief, political ideology that would sum up a need to have a Burma unit, then the rest is something that we can definitely deal with at the later stage. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sia, for sharing what is important. Uh, if you want to build a federal union, that uh, all the ethnic nationalities desire. It is important to have trust among the ethnic nationalities and to build trust. It is important for the level, for the leaders, for the ethnic nationalities from various levels need to work together. And thank you for highlighting such an important point. And it is important indeed uh, crucial for Myanmar to build a federal union. And that uh, because of the context, because of the so for the diversity it's important to form it as well. It is also important to share the basic understanding to the people about what the need for it as well. That uh, and that uh, that uh, and that uh, and that it is also important also to reduce the concern of the people. It is now the right opportunity, the right time also to do the public outreach, public education, as well as on the to also to get the public buy in as well. So thank you for sharing, Seya. We, are, we have listened to the different contributions from our speaker, and we have come to the part about asking questions to the speaker. Now we're going to give, we are going to give time to our participants. We also have uh, received questions from the, the from the from our audience as well. And that, uh, so we also, I would like to, uh, before I give the questions to our speakers, I would like to read a comment as well. So one comment we have seen in this, uh, there's other, uh, that uh, you know that uh, the essence of the federalism is to ensure there is a legal and uh, equal distribution of uh, of a uh, governance of executive judicial legislative powers among the central unit and the federal units that uh, wish that uh, there are also many examples of the federalism based on ethnicity, based on the population as well. In Africa, in Africa, we have also seen more uh, communal conflict due to the due to the federal units based on the ethnicity. So I think it might be it, it might also be good to be able to pay to uh, to take the basis on the already existing structure. There also is a question about uh, forming a uh, forming uh, the Burma state. If we were to change uh, New Sakai region. Uh, the sky transfer sky uh, will change uh, sky region into um into a uh, Burma state. Will the people of Sakai region be happy if we uh, also change the name of the Mandalay region and then organize the region as a Burma state? Will the people of Mandalay be happy as well? And that if we were to do that, uh, that um it is uh, when you talk about you know maybe a federal unit, there are many tensions, there are many conflicts, there will be many conflicts. So it will be better if we just you know, maintain the existing existing federal states and then uh, it will there should be a more of a representative system and uh, to be ensuring to have a, like a director you know universal voting for the to elect the president or the for the federal, federal units to have also the power so my question is that should the myanmar um that uh, should have Myanmar federal system be based on the ethnicity, or are we going to assure existing federal units to have full democratic rights? And that once we have the full democratic rights and we can ensure more uh, that uh, more right and that more democratic rights to enjoy, there will also be democracy. So what kind of structure should there be in Myanmar? Even if there is, uh, even if uh, you know there is uh, there is uh, self determination, that if there is no democracy. That it won't be a it it will be a turn into some form of a uh, uh, sort of also for the dictatorship anyway with the autocracy as well. So I also have a question from the comment. So this is a question to Sia Martin the B and the others and that uh, and that uh, it is uh, that how uh, what my question is. Uh, uh, that has also, so there are also talk about the, how do we change about how do we change about the ideology and that uh, perspective of the Burma, you know, Burma majority. So, so I know the what is your opinion on that? Y yes. Um. So, and then I also like to respond to the the comment that you have read earlier because the time also is late. So I will keep my answer short. That you know, you mentioned that um, that the commenter mentioned about the African example. But if we look at the, what is happening in Africa, there are a lot of times it's quite this pattern is very similar to similar to that of Myanmar. But if we look at that, that but that's a, sorry. so if you were to look at it and then we'll see that one thing we have to be also to be careful about is that. Uh, you know, for example, like a country like Ethiopia, for example, and that uh, the Ethiopia is, uh, you know, is based on that uh, 
based 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 on UPI is based on the new now decree and that uh, the uh, that that uh, you know state forces are now fighting once again and that decree also uh, that uh, seems to be um, that uh, not that they seem to be in trouble and that uh, although uh, that uh, people are saying that uh, you know although that we make effort but in reality uh that in reality there are also challenges so one thing i would like to remind you of is something we might have forgotten about it is that the issue, if you look at the conflict in ethiopia and that um it that um you know that often people will it, it may be called it may be called itself as like an ethnic ethnicity based a federal union but if you really identify what are the root causes because there is no equality because of the it is issue of the equality and self-determination although there is a name of ethnic state and federal unit and there is no equality and equality and that self-determination that's why we're there so rule of law equality and uh, that uh, self-determination or the autonomy is the key as well so in the Tigray in Ethiopia in the 89 in the 1989 and 1990s they have fought they have fought against the military dictators and now uh, that uh, after that they have fought the dictators now that uh, that uh, Hara, uh, Hara people are, have, have the let the, have, uh, is a president and then they form a government and now they are oppressing the decree. There is also that narrative as well, but uh, in the in the 1990s, uh, that uh, the, although there was a fight uh, to remove, to eradicate the unitary dictatorship, but however, the military, the state armed forces or the political coalition, that um, they have a political coalition as well, and these are not, uh, in the political co coalition as well and that uh, in that in that uh, in the econo major economic as well all these activities all these areas are monopolized and controlled by only one institution although there was a there was a you know, efforts to do that it has been going on for th more than 30 years so when you have a, a single institution monopolized economy and politics and the state armed forces that's why this um, conflicts are, are happening again so there is a ethnic states or the ethnic base of federalism is only in name it's not practice it's not exercise and that they were trying to just uh, you know, remove uh, that uh, one um, one uh, one dictators, and then when there is a institutions trying to control power and trying to build their own interests, then uh, the concern of the people is that uh, you know to be able to have a uh, equality, and that um, you know that uh, there has been a there has been um, you know that a lack of uh, implementation, lack of implementation in terms of equality and subordination. That's why the conflicts are happening, not because of the ethnicity and and other speakers other speakers are highlighting the importance of uh, the importance of equality and self-determination it is also important to have a check and balance between the central unit and the federal unit these are the system these are the check and balance this is my short answer to the comment there also there is there are also questions we're asking about that having nine Bama groups and that is also a comment i have seen as well well that uh, what, that uh, you know, setting ethnic nationalities is not something we are experts on. That uh, it should be experts who, who you know, that is uh, that uh, there are area experts about the ethnic nationalities, about the, the so those uh, those uh, those social scientists, uh, those uh, ethnograph ethno ethno uh, those are specialists in the ethno ethnology. Should if you look at this, if you look at those studies, if you read those studies, but it is that Myanmar doesn't have 135 for ethnic groups, and that is the finding, and we have seen that in, in some of the papers. See that there are some of the papers also claim that there are about 50 ethnic uh, nationalities in Myanmar. Some game, uh, there are different claims to it as well, and that either do that or what do they care? What if we are to look at where do they come from? As you can see, and that it comes from that, um, you know, these are all the points uh, that come uh, from the from the from the military. The military has started it as well, and this started is because that uh, they have political reason because they want to be able to uh, you know because. They want uh, that they want to you know make uh, problems. They also want to you know create um, you know the problems uh, to to the to provoke uh, conflicts and tension as well. In that case, uh, that what should we do? What should we change? Is that uh, I think it will be uh, the experts will be who should be able to answer this question, and that is uh, most important as well. That uh, okay, thank you. Um, I would like to ask uh, also to ask you ask another question about the second comment. Uh, and that, um, so when we say that uh, ethnic nationality, so if the non, uh, if the non, uh, that if all the ethnic nationalities can be considered as Bamas as well, and that, uh, that, um, and that, uh, 
that it, what about the uh, the those who don't consider or I recognize as of as Brahma, can they also form a state for them as well? You know that maybe may I cast a question with you to share his opinion. If we base ourselves on democracy, I think uh, that uh, the original owner of the supreme power is the people of Myanmar. If the people desire, if the people people will decide, people will make the decide, maybe the decision or how many states or how states will be formed. These states will be did that. Well, they they will say because we would, if we believe in democracy, then uh, it will be we have to accept what is happening on the according to the population as well, and that we we cannot deny the people. We can also negate the people. We cannot say no to the people because it should be very much depends on the will of the people. What we are saying. The, how many states will there be in Myanmar, or that all these points will be more of uh, that is uh, that is obvious is also is part of the constitution. The constitution is something you cannot draft. Not everyone can draft a constitution. Is a constitution needs to be on the right democratic pathway for even to draft the even to develop the constitution. You need to have an assembly. You need to have an election. You need to have a, a first bit at the constituents assembly that this election they will get the elected representative who has the public representative amendment then they will develop their constitution so it is a it is according to them so they will represent the voice of the people uh, even after the constitution has been drafted about the important decisions like uh, states or mistakes or the or the secession or that you know coming together all these they have to go through the the vote of the people through the referendum if you believe in democracy it is not the desire of a single person or a single leader it should be based on the will of the people and what the people really want and when it comes to establishment of federal units it doesn't matter how many federal units there will be what is important is building the nation it could be eight it could be 10 it could be 12 it could be 14 that you know always the numbers is or the, the numbers are not important what we should really focus on is that how do we ensure that minorities in whatever ethnic state there may be, how do we guarantee their rights? How do we guarantee their voice? How do we ensure that they uh, they enjoy the equal rights that they are entitled to? So like neighbors or that like the same way, are they part of the Burma? There are many questions. There are also many strong feelings that people have that uh, if you look at the, if you if you look at the original, you know, that, uh, you know, to get nominations and categorizes, we have eight major ethnicity and then minor, uh, over 130 minor minorities. And what do you say? Eight majorities, eight majority of Burma, Asian, and then Burma, even among the majority, Burma is considered the majority among the majority as well. And there are also, and minority which are not in the eight majorities but they are in their in their in their territory they are also majority in the minority too so there are these sentiments these sentiments and feelings are always at different levels so when we think about the restructuration of the ethnic minority and we need to really uh, we need to have uh, we need to able to define a minority a minority there are many de definitions uh, in the world and the, the general Austin also has spoken about it uh, in his time as well and he was not talking he was rough he was not talking he was making uh, making uh, his own ideology but he was he was referring to sterling he was referring to other world leaders as well and there are also uh, world level agreements on the how to how to, what does constitute majority or minority it doesn't matter how many federal units you have what do we need to ensure in the every federal unit and the rights of the minority must be protected that the right the self-determination the right to um that right to determine their own destiny the the autonomy of these minority must be ensured and that's the important point in forming the federal unit if we do not have that at the in the side the federal unit that it doesn't matter how many federal units there are it will merely be agreement between the majorities and the armed group system or the fight for freedom in Myanmar will never be over. That's how I see it. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you for your response. And you're right, um, because we talk about the federal units, we have to have the number of federal units or the territory, but the well of the people living in those states are the most are the, are the, are the key um, is more important than most and that it has other speakers also have pointed out about the well of the people uh, as well. And, and one thing I think 
I have also noticed is that it is important to have equality. It is important to have autonomy. And if we are building a federal union for autonomy and equality, it is important that it doesn't matter what federal state, federal, how many federal unions are where you are in terms of federal, federal state. It is important that all ethnics, minority or majority, their rights and their autonomy must be respected. And these are the important commitments that need to be adhered, adhered to in the federal union. So thank you for sharing point. As the last question, as a last comment, um, we have received a last comment and question. And then I also give a turn to uh, the person who has uh, raised his hand on the Zoom so that uh, so to be able to resolve the issue of the federal, the issue related to the federalism and a whole, what kind of federal experts do we have? And when we really, you know, when you really work on the federalism, do we have expert? Do we have the, you know, necessary manpower to be able to address all the issues that who we can entrust them with all this issue? Because people are very tired already. People are exhausted in this revolution. People do not want to be dragged in this, um, you know, about their knowledge about the federalism. And also the BOC that there is a people are already tired because people lack awareness about the federalism or that you understand deeply about the Understanding. So, so the question is on: Do we have so do we have federal experts on that? So, I would like to ask uh, Dr. Pinyamo to uh, that uh, to to answer as, as well. Can you? Thank you very much for the questioner and his question. I repeatedly mentioned about that. For our organization, we researched federalism. We made it all sort of comparative analysis. And there are no less than 11 publications about federalism. So there is physical federalism that we published as well. And very recently, there is foreign affair federalism. It's the recent publication that we had. And, 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 and these are all some of the examples of our publication. So our organization, is there for ethnic people and well when i mention ethnic some might claim that well you don't include burmese well i don't mean that so i uh, mean our publications are there for non-burmese people burmese people as well and back in 20 uh 20 10, 20, um, 15 up to 2020, we had all sort of training, awareness program, educational program regarding federalism. But then again, now, there is the question, did we do enough for the Burmese population? Well, for the people in Zagain, we um, definitely think that they need to be aware. Never been there before I am not a Burmese. So it is very important for awareness program regarding the concepts of federalism for Burmese population. There, I think it is very very it would be very very productive to have the Burmese organization promoting the awareness of federalism for the Burmese community for the Burmese population because there are such dynamic non-Burmese community or population my understanding, experience, in comparison, the federal education for Burma people was 
rather weak in terms of its intensity than that of the dynamic that we have in non Burmese population. In order to have a successful federal country, the basic federal understanding is to be rooted in our public. A lot of such improvement is required. Where do we begin? We are to begin with education system. We are to begin with educational perspective. We are to continuously organize this kind of dialogue that we are having. I am talking the smallest, the briefest version of the federalism. But we need to talk more. Even the federalism is implemented in a particular country, the continuous awareness and education is still required. Otherwise, what will happen is that whenever the, um, whenever there is this, uh, 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 because there is this kind of concern that, you know what, there is a Burmese, Burma unit, the Burmese unit, I lived under the Burmese unit, but I am not the Burmese, but then again, would I worry? You know, this kind of situation will be popping up with the individual. You know, this kind of situation will be uh, addressed by the clear understanding of public uh, awareness. Because the thing is that in Zagain, for example, if Zagain would be the Bama unit, then again, none Bama that who lives in the Ma unit will be treated as the minority, and the minority will enjoy its minority rights, which, again, would be understood only if you are aware of the federalism concept and principles. And another thing is that the minority within minority, again, that became very tricky. And we have publications about that. The moon in the federal country would be seen as the minority, but then again, the non moon within moon state will be seen as the minority within minority. So then again, the Bama within the moon state will be treated. Or, 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 or will be regarded themselves as the minority within minority. So they would be worried as well. If there is a proper awareness and if there would be proper education, providing that if there would be proper mechanism in the country regarding the protection of the minority within minority, then we don't need to worry. All of these are huge issue to be understood, and all of this concept is to be well informed for the um, people. Whatever you picked up within the country, it is the federal issue. Health is the federal issue, and education is the federal issue. So you live with all this issue. In order to understand for all of you, I mean, all of this issue for you, you need to be educated. You need to be made aware. And this is quite an enormous undertaking that we all have to prepare. Thank you very much. Now, I would like to invite Zolwin as a last individual to pose question to this conversation that we are having. Thank you. I already got some of the answers while observing the conversation, but anyway, let me try. Federalism is based on mutual trust. This is my opinion. In order to earn such mutual trust, equality is to be there. One panelist mentioned that. Without equality, trust will not be there. If there is no trust, federalism would be 
just terminology people overuse it and now we have a new G and we have the um, leading groups in the revolution I don't know who they are but what I would like to say is that they have to consider the diversity and to have the genuine idea to wanting to have the country developed so that kind of goodwill this kind of genuine feeling would contribute the trust among each one and it would be very much productive for our future journey for federalism but then again i also would like to say that the public awareness intervention for the federalism was um, hardly there but then again if we start talking about the public awareness it will take too much of the time that is also another worry that I have and I also would like to say something there are some sort of negotiation going on among um, different groups I mean to what extent the negotiation has been there what kind of achievement so far has been there among the uh, negotiations am among the ethnic and non-ethnic groups i mean whoever would answer that i would be i mean obliged thank you very much again we want to um, participate ourselves with our own way in building the future democratic federalism for the country and i do believe that the leaders are trying their best with their goodwill and with their genuine feeling with the ambition to have this direction that is my opinion but anyway um, any one of the panelists um, would want to address the gentleman questions yeah so wins sway maybe you might want to um, contribute thank you well let me share my general understanding regarding the trust building I think that is the um, question well yes um, he, he encouraged to further build trust that is one point and his second point is that he would like to understand to what extent or to what degree that everyone is on the same page among the different groups or diverse group well in order to respond to all of this trust building has quite some progress in Zagain the ERO and UG local defense forces are engaging among themselves of course there still needs room for the improvement in their relationships as well and in terms of the future the federal negotiation yes the diverse groups are negotiating I know but then again there are a lot of um, a journey ahead a long journey ahead waiting for us about one thing that I would like to say is that we have to leave our own bias whatever bias you may have whatever obsession that you would have it would serve as a negative drawback for you to travel for the future you may have racial bias you may have religious bias you may have ideology bias all of these bias would have negative contribution for the genuine federalism for the future that is the comparative analysis that we've learned from the from 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 the international community that is what i would like to say thank you very much 
This is the end of the conversation that we have. Having the end of this conversation, I would like to share some of the messages. It is very important to get rid of military dictatorship. That is the biggest obstacle for our future. So we have to endure in this struggle and our future ambition. And we hope that everyone would be collectively and solidarily participated in this struggle. Thank you very much and good night. Goodbye. Yeah, bye.